whenever people ask me what my favorite uh, spreads are in the book, it's a little bit like which are your favorite children. You sort of love them all for different reasons. One of the ones that kind of emerged in the course of doing the project is someone just anecdotally was, was in our office one day and showed me a presentation they were given, giving, and in their presentation was this picture of the old uh, FBI filing system from the 50s of the, the women with little file, you know, card catalogs in this vast sort of you know, warehouse. And I thought it's such a cool picture and so much the opposite of our idea of how we store data today. And then someone showed me a picture of Julian Assange's a data center 100 feet underground in Sweden, which had similar shapes. So I thought, this is really cool. These are file catalogs, and here are these you know, huge data servers. And then I thought, I wonder if there's some story about J. Edgar Hoover that Time Magazine did as a hero back then. And we found this wonderful Time Magazine cover. And of course, back then, he was a hero. He was the head of the FBI, saving the free world. And now we found out that, in fact, he was using a lot of this information for his own personal uh, purposes. And then, uh, then we found a Time Magazine cover with Julian Assange, you know, basically being very critical of him and, you know, saying he was destroying, you know. It, it's very interesting to me. What I'm I, I wonder if 50 years from now we'll look back, maybe Julian will be the hero and J. Edgar Hoover will be the, the enemy of the state. That time changes the way that we understand perspective. So I thought that the way that page evolved was interesting. And, and the last thing that I thought about it was really fun was that um, someone made a comment that, in fact, the data center where the WikiLeaks data is stored is actually much more vulnerable to attack than the FBI filing system, which you couldn't have gotten in there. And if you did get in there, there were no Xerox machines and there were certainly no thumb drives. So the fact that, you know, that all this data that actually ended up in WikiLeaks was basically snuck out on you know, a CD-ROM or on little thumb drives would have been impossible back in the 50s. So that was actually more secure, even though it was much less accessible. So it, the page has this wonderful sort of echoes back and forth through technology and space and time and politics and, and history. And it's one of my favorite spreads in the book. <laughs>